First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks for the Buddhist Society of National University of Singapore for organizing this public talk by taking great pains and troubles using great effort. As young Buddhists, they have shown their skill and ability to encourage others to follow this noble teachings of the Buddha. The subject tonight we have to discuss is three basic principles in human life. As human beings, we must have some principles. Otherwise, it is impossible for us to distinguish or to show any superiority complex that we are higher than the other living beings. Because there is a saying in Sanskrit language, Ahara nidra bhai maithunancha samanya metat pasubhir narana. Eating, sleeping, sex, and self preservation. These four things are very common in every living being in this universe. If human beings also spend their life only for eating, sleeping, experiencing sex and fighting for their life, what have we got to prove that we are higher than the other living beings or animals? There is dharmo hite sang adhiko vishesa. Uh, there is an extraordinary characteristics in human life that is dharma. This dharma you cannot find in other living beings because human intelligence is far superior to all the other existing living beings in the whole universe. That is why human mind learn to appreciate the dharma by using that intelligence. On the other hand, you will be surprised to hear that human beings are the only living beings in this universe who have a religion. Even Devas, Brahmas have no particular religion. We worship them, do some offerings in the name of Devas and Brahmas. But we do not know that our human intelligence is far superior to their intelligence. That is why a Deva or a Brahma cannot become a Buddha. Only a human being can become a Buddha because of that intelligence. 
there are four kinds of religions in this world revealed religions organized religions institutional religions and natural religions revealed religion a message given by the god through a messenger or prophet commandment or religious laws to maintain humanity people strongly believe and accept that as a revealed religion organized religions before religions come into existence human beings had humanism not related to any religion by knowing the humane qualities virtues characters they organize certain practices belief according to their way of thinking to govern the whole mankind shame and fear these two things govern humanity institutional religion introduced religious way of life in such a way by thinking very deeply psychology philosophy and various other intellectual aspect to organize mankind or humanity to maintain their dignity to respect their human intelligence to cultivate humane qualities to live peacefully without facing enormous problems and worries and sufferings and disturbances then natural religions when people could not understand the real nature of natural phenomena natural occurrences they had some sort of belief that there will be some sort of supernatural power behind all these incident such as lightning or thunder rain rainbow and uh, volcanic eruptions and epidemic flood natural disasters and various other natural occurrences therefore they started to worship to pray do some offerings to avoid certain misfortune as well as to gain something through the influence of such unknown unimaginable forces so natural religion started in this way 
Buddhism is not belong to any of these four groups. In fact, although we use the word religion, when you define the word religion from the dictionary, we cannot satisfy with that explanation because Buddhism has gone beyond that. So the most suitable word for the teachings of the Buddha is dharma, not religion, but a common usage. We have no other choice. We say it is a religion. What is dharma? It is very meaningful. Because in religion we cannot find such deep meaning. Chatusu apaye sucha vatta dukkhe sucha apatamane katva dhare titi dhamma. Definition. The noble way of life that support us, uphold, without allowing us to get into unfortunate state of suffering, such as hell, animal, or spirit, or ghost, or devils, or unfortunate living beings. So if you follow the dharma, the dharma hold us, support us, without allowing us to fall or to get into any of those unfortunate state of suffering. See how meaningful it is. Uh, that is the definitions of Buddhism. Buddhism is not a revealed religion. The Buddha did not get any message from heaven or from God. He never had any teacher to teach him how to gain enlightenment. Nami acharyo atthi, he said. I never had any teacher to tell me, to teach me how to gain enlightenment. What I did, by using my full effort, eradicating, uprooting all the evil thoughts, words and action, life after life, by cultivating all the great qualities, virtues, by purifying my mind, I gained this enlightenment. Uh, therefore, you can understand that Buddhism is not belong to any of these religious groups. It is. The result of a great man who had courage to sacrifice his pleasure, his life, his time, to cultivate life after life in searching the absolute truth there are many kinds of truths. All are not absolute truths. They remain as truth for a certain period. Later, we will come to know that it is not the real truth. The truth revealed or realized or the preached by the Buddha is absolute truth because 
There is nobody in this world who can single out even one word uttered by the Buddha as to, according to their scientific or psychological or modern discoveries, to disprove. So far they could not do that. It is an absolute truth. No one can change. The Buddha also cannot change. The God also cannot change. Human beings also cannot change. Truth is truth. Uh, this is the nature of Buddhism. Then, human beings, human principle. What are the basic human principle? Here we mention three. What is the meaning of human? Pali and Sanskrit or many other languages use the word manushya. It was a very meaningful word. Manasa Usanta. Only living being who can raise, who can cultivate, who can develop the mind up to the maximum level. Uh, that living being is called Manushya, human. The man, the word man is derived from mana, mind. One who got a mind to think, that person is called man. When you say man, please remember woman also included. <laughs> Without woman there is no man. Then, the Chinese definitions of humanity. Chinese philosophers say human beings must have human heartedness. In that human heartedness there must be sympathy and honesty. If these two qualities are not there, in their humanity, they are not real human beings. Chinese philosophers. Western philosophers define human as those who can use their sense of reasoning, especially grief. They say human beings are the only living beings who can use their sense of reasoning. But many other living beings use only their instinct, instinctive power for their survival, for their pleasure, for their protection. They cannot go beyond that. But human mind can penetrate can go through any existing matters or elements of the world system in this whole universe. There is no such energy that we can compare. The Buddha said in Anguttara Nikaya, Nahang bhikkave anyang ek dhammam pi samadupasam yathidang bhikkave chitta. Chittang bhikkave lahu parivarta. He says, I have never seen another dynamic energy other than human mind that which runs so rapidly. Take for instance all those who have studied science can understand 
atom. It takes few millions times with per second for atom to change, change and change. Few millions times per second. When you compare this with the human mind, you can understand when human mind work seventeen times, uh, then once the elements and atoms and everything change. When the mind works seventeen times, uh, then the whole systems change once. Those who have studied biology can understand. Cells, everything in our body change, but take time. One mind, one thought which appear in the mind thousands times faster than lightning they appear and disappear. Disappear means by creating another thought, continuity. Uh, this is the nature of the mind. This mind is responsible for everything. In Dhammapada, the first sayings of the Buddha, mano pubbangama dhamma, mana, mind. Mind is responsible for everything that which exists in this whole universe, good and bad. Human mind is responsible. pre-emblem to the, the Charter of the United Nations. When they were drafting the Constitution, they mentioned like this, human mind create war. The same human mind can bring peace. They are repeating what the Buddha said 2,500 years ago. Mano Pubbangama Dhamma. Mind is responsible for good things as well as bad things. It is due to our imagination we blame God, ghost, devils. It is our imagination because our understanding is very poor. We believe we are suffering today due to our original sin. Recently, when a speaker giving a talk, he mentioned if Adam and Eve were Chinese, we never become sinners, original sins, no more. Why? Instead of eating forbidden food, if Adam and Eve were Chinese, they eat that snake which appear first. <laughs> <laughs> then we will be free from the original sin. Unfortunately, they were not Chinese. <laughs> uh, this is the reason they say we have sicknesses, we become old, we die because of that original sin. All right? What about animals? Animals also suffer from sicknesses. They also become old. They also die. 
You see, they, due to their original sin, because they don't eat apple. <laughs> Forget about them. What about the plant life? Plant life also suffer from sicknesses, grow old and die. It's due to original sin. Uh, these are the things that you have to consider by using your common sense without accepting what people talk about the creations and the beginnings and the reasons. When a speaker was giving a talk, he started to tell, at the beginning, when God started to create heaven and earth, somebody interrupted suddenly. May I know what he was doing before he started to create heaven and hell? It's a very difficult question to answer. <laughs> then the speaker said, I think at that time he was creating hell for those who ask this kind of questions. <laughs> And these are the problems, because there are certain questions that we cannot give the correct answer. <coughs> As human beings, we have three characters. Nature, animal nature, human nature, and divine nature. In every living being, Especially human beings, we have these three characters. By using our intelligence, we subdue, control our human nature. So when we subdue and control our human nature, then we cultivate human nature, by subduing animal nature. What is human nature? What is animal nature? Just now I mentioned, animals have no sense of reasoning. Animals have no ma intelligence to control their anger, their emotion, Animals have no shame and fear because they lead the normal, natural way of life. But as human beings, since we have a mind to think deeply, we have realized certain things are immoral, certain things are moral, Certain things are wicked and cruel and dangerous. Certain things are good and useful by using that sense of reasoning. But others cannot use this. That is why humans are higher than the others. So by suppressing animal nature, we maintain humane qualities. Then we must have Patience, tolerance, understanding, unity, harmony, goodwill, compassion, uh, these are the humane qualities. We have developed these qualities before religions come into existence. Later, what we have done, we invited God into our humanism that we have developed and introduced as a religion and borrowed all these ideas 
and introduce that all these things are given by the God. Kindness, compassion, honesty, sincerity, cooperations, all are given by the God. But before they accept or invite the God, they have cultivated, they developed these good qualities. But when they accepted religion, because of fear of God, they decided to uphold these good qualities and abstain from bad habit. Therefore, the concept of God, religion have done some service to humanity. So we should not condemn religion, any religion. Religions have done something. Although Burton Russell says, religions have done more harm than good to mankind. Jealousy, hatred, discriminations introduced by different religions. He says, those who have no religions live peacefully without fighting and quarreling. Those who have religion every day fight <laughs> because of religion. Now that is why Burton Russell say, religion has done more harm than good, but I don't agree with him. Religions have done, whether it is Buddhism or Christianity or Islam or Hinduism or any other ism, religions definitely control this mankind. If with religions, if human beings behave today in this way, what would be the situations of the mankind if there is no religion? Assume, here, Singapore government announced tomorrow for 24 hours there is no law, no police, no army, no court, no punishment. 24 hours we want to test you whether you behave as real human beings or not. I think 24 hours more than enough for you to destroy the whole island. <laughs> in spite of all these religions. Then what would be the situation if there is no religion? Uh, this is the danger of human mind. That is why religion is needed. Animals and other living beings can live without religion because they follow the nature. Human mind, human intelligence violated, has gone against the nature. Now, no one can control human mind. It is so deep. Take very simple example. Medical science is so advanced today. Surgeons have discovered transplantation. Now, eyes, heart, kidneys, and pancreas, and recently lungs also. Transplant. Now, because of this transplantation, human beings are in danger. In certain countries, doctors take away people's kidneys without their knowledge. Yes, there are court cases. Things are innocent. Devas, God, those who don't know these kind of tricks. Uh, this is the nature. Human mind knows how to appreciate and understand dharma or religion. At the same time, if there is no religion, no dharma, 
they misuse and abuse and destroy everything. I think all of you know it is not a secret how far they have developed their scientific knowledge, discoveries today. If President of America push one button, within half an hour the whole world turned into ashes. Do you know that? This is the development of the human intelligence. Everything is ready. This is called development. They have discovered atom, thinking that they can do a lot of constructive, use for constructive purposes. But they develop atom bomb, nuclear bomb, to destroy the whole world, not only this world. Even suns and the moons also will be affected. They found out. Human mind. Uh, that is why the Buddha say he has never seen such a dynamic, energetic force other than human mind. If this mind is not controlled or trained, disciplined properly, they will destroy everything. They have started. All the other living beings slowly, slowly disappear because of human beings. Water pollution, air pollution, and destroying the earth, saying that they are developing the country. Actually, they do not develop, they destroy. But other living beings never destroy anything that exists, only human beings. So one day, if there is anybody to destroy this world, it's not God. Before that, human, human beings will do the job. They are ready. So, principles we had to uphold for our own benefit as well as for the benefit of others. We observe seal, precept. Just now you observe pancha seal, five precept. Seal means discipline, train. I train myself by knowing vast difference. Buddhist principles and the commandment and religious laws. Commandment and religious laws they follow because of fear. Fear of God. Fear of punishment. Otherwise they can do anything. If there is no such punishment, if there is no God, they can do any wicked thing in this world. But here, sila means, I train my mind not to do this. Not because of God, not because of punishment, but knowing that it is bad. Uh, the Buddha says like this, I preach you according to my experience. It's not a message given to me by somebody, my experience. I have done a lot of bad deeds during many previous births. I can remember how I had to suffer because of the bad deeds that I have committed. Uh, therefore, through my own experience I am telling you, Better not to do bad things. You had to suffer. 
and you also create suffering. I have done a lot of good deeds, meritorious deeds. I can understand what a wonderful, happy, peaceful, prosperous, contented life I had because of the good deeds that I have done. So I advise you also to do some good deeds, you also can experience that good result. So in Buddhism you cannot find commandment, no religious laws, no religious punishment. Religion never punish you. But your action punish you, not religion. You had to face the consequences. It is not the Buddha or religion punish you. You create that. You create your own hell. You create your own heaven. Nobody else can do that. Human life is the center in between heaven and hell. The other living beings are not in the center. What does it mean? Human mind is so advanced, very easily they can develop that mind to experience heavenly bliss. Other living beings cannot do that so easily. Human mind is so clever, so crooked, so cunning, so selfish, can create any kind of dangerous, wicked, cruel thing, very easy to create hell. Other living beings are not so cruel, not so wicked. They catch another animal for their food, survival for the fetus. For their living survival, they catch another living being and satisfy. But we human beings do not kill others just because we are starving. Today, the whole world is a battlefield, madhouse. Why? Do you think they have no food to eat, no clothing, no shelter, no medicine? They are not killing others, they are not destroying other countries because of this. Mahatma Gandhi has said this very clearly. He said, here in this world, we have more than enough things for our need, but we haven't got enough thing to satisfy our craving. And that is what is happening today. They are fighting because of the extraordinary craving. They want more power, more authority, more pleasure, not for their survival. No contentment. One of the best advice given by the Buddha for us to uphold as principle is Santutti Paramang Dhana. Remember, contentment is the highest wealth. Rich man is not a wealthy man. Rich man is a very poor man. Rich man is in fear. Rich man's life is in danger. Rich man always creates suspicions, lot of enemies. People are waiting to kidnap <laughs> and to bluff and swindle. A rich man cannot go alone, must have security guard, bodyguard and two pistols and also how many lock, how many iron doors, how many padlock, how many Still, he cannot sleep without fear. He is shivering inside the house. 
That is the way how rich men enjoy life. <laughs> but contented man is a very lucky man, wealthy man. The Buddha say he is wealthy. What is contentment? This is enough for me. This is enough for my family. I don't want to go beyond that. Now that is called contentment. When we maintain this contentment, jealousy never appear in that mind. If you are contented, jealousy never appear in your mind. You allow others also to enjoy their life, no jealousy. If no jealousy, anger also never happens. If no anger, no violence, no bloodshed, no enemies. Can lead a peaceful, contented life with hope and confidence. Uh, see the meaning of the Buddha saying, Santutti Paramang Dhana. Try to maintain some sort of satisfaction, not to go crazy. One day, a king approached the Buddha and asked one question. I have seen the priest, the followers of many other religions, because there were many religions in India at that time. I have seen many of them. But when I look at your monk, your disciples, I can see serenity, cheerfulness, very good complexion in them. I also heard that they take only one meal a day. So I really cannot understand how they maintain this serenity, cheerfulness, good complexion. And the Buddha gave a beautiful answer. This is not only for the monks, for everybody. He said, Atitang nanu sochanti. My disciples do not regret for what they have committed earlier. They don't repent. According to Buddhism, there is no such thing as repenting. Do more and more and more meritorious deeds, good deeds, some service to others to overcome. It's not by repenting and praying and worshipping. That is the Buddhist attitude. Nappajappanti nagata. My disciples never worry about their future who are going to attend to us when they are sick, when we are old. They have no such ideas. Pachyupannena yapenti. They satisfy whatever they receive. Maintain containment. Never say, this is not enough for me. Oh, I don't like this, I want the better one. They never say. That is their way of life. Therefore, they can maintain this serenity, cheerfulness, good complexion because of that contentment. It is true. You also can try. Your face become more serene, <laughs> more cheerful, disappear your sour face, your long face, because you are contented. Every day your faces are very sour. Don't know why. Because you are not contented. Now, if anybody asks, why we cannot satisfy with our life? Although we have more than enough things, why we cannot satisfy with this life? What is the correct answer? The correct answer is, we have no contentment. If there is contentment, we never 
say, oh, we cannot satisfy with this life. We say we cannot satisfy due to conflict of selfish desire and impermanence, clash. Selfish desire like to have permanent, peaceful, happy, prosperous life. The things that which appears are impermanent, change, otherwise they never appear. So, our selfish desire cannot agree, cannot satisfy with these changes, impermanency. Anicca, dukkha, anatta. Natural phenomenon, universal phenomenon. But selfish desire won't. Take for instance, we like birth, but we don't like death. Uh, that means no contentment. But there is no birth if there is no death. Death is the beginning of a life. Birth bring the death certificate, not the birth certificate. I wrote one booklet just prepare. Life is uncertain, death is certain. I think that booklet is there. Uh, when you read that booklet, you get the answer. Setting sun here in this country becomes the rising sun in another country. So setting sun is not the end of the sun. So death is not the end of our life. Death is the beginning of another life. So the birth is the beginning of death. Birth and death and birth and death. One day the Buddha advised Ananda, his Ananda, if anybody asks this question, why death take place? You must say, death take place because of birth. If there is no birth, there is no death. Uh, that is the correct answer. If you try to stop death, you are not understanding people. You are going against the nature and it is a losing battle. In the end, you have to surrender. You are not ready to face facts. So the first principle among those three basic principles is the precept, virtues, morals for the development of our life. We have wrong concept about life. We take body as our life. Biggest mistake. We cannot see the life. Mental energy and life process both work together. The body is the shelter, the house. We devote our whole life to attend, to look after, to feed, to wash, to clean, to beautify, to decorate. And how much do you spend for your cosmetic? <laughs> beautify. Thinking this is, you are decorating your life. This is the dirty, ugly, smelly, filthy, impermanent, physical body which create enormous suffering. One of the disciples of the Buddha, his name was Vakkali. Every day come and sit in front of him and watching like this, just like watching television, you know. 
The Buddha asks, what can you, what are you doing here? Reverend Sir, when I look at your serenity, your features, your complexion, gives me a lot of satisfaction. <laughs> then the, here you can understand who the Buddha is. This is very important. The Buddha say, King te vakkali imina putika yana dugandena sarina, then invent all thing like this, vakkali. What do you gain by watching this dirty, ugly, filthy, impermanent physical body? Whether it is the Buddha's body or my body or your body, make no difference. Buddha is not a busy body, no? <laughs> Just like same physical body. Because the Buddhahood is not in the physical body. Uh, then the Buddha say, Yo dhammang pasati. So mang pasati. This is a wonderful, beautiful saying. One who sees the dharma, through this dharma, he can see who the Buddha is. Uh, this saying is more than enough for you to understand, to see the real Buddha. If you want to see the real Buddha, must create that Buddha in your mind through this kind of saying, teaching. The image that we create is artist impression, and not the real Buddha. But we worship because that gives us some sort of satisfaction. It is very important. But you cannot see the real Buddha through the idols or images. But you can see real Buddha. This kind of saying when you study. Another well known uh, personality, follower of another religion, came to see the Buddha Upali. He said he want to become a Buddhist. The Buddha asked, why do you want to become a Buddhist? He said, people say your teaching is wonderful, beautiful. I also decided to become one of your followers. The Buddha, have you ever heard my teaching? No, I have never. Then how do you know whether you can practice my teaching? Whether you can agree? Whether you can understand my teaching? That is not the way for a man to change his religion. Must study, try to understand, is appealing to that mind, then decide. Then this man said, Venerable Sir, I think this advice is more than enough for me to understand the nature of your teaching. <laughs> if I have approached Another religious leader in this country embrace me and announce such a great man also come and embrace our religion. Instead, you advise me to wait and study and consider so many things. That is enough. I am fully convinced. Uh, here you can understand who the Buddha is. That's what the Buddha says, Yo dhammang pasati, so mang pasati. One who sees the Dharma can understand who the Buddha is. Then, there are three basic principles called Sila, Samadhi, Panya. These are the three basic principles only human beings can cultivate. Others cannot. Devas also cannot. Who are those Devas who enjoy their life? During their previous birth, they have done a lot of meritorious deeds as human beings. And they had the opportunity to be born in Devaloka to experience more worldly sensual pleasure. But they do not know 
what will happen to them in the end. And there they do not perform meritorious deeds. They have no particular religions to consider. When you go to Brahma world, they lead very peaceful, very contented, very, very uh, happy life, tranquility, calmness. In fact, they use only two senses, eyes and ear. Other three are not active. Control. Especially when this one is controlled, we, we can live peacefully, you know. <laughs> All our problems come from here, you know. <laughs> Beautiful sayings in Christianity and Buddhism, both. People always talk about we cannot eat this, we cannot eat this, if you eat this, we pollute this, we, what do you call, we spoil this. But the Buddha and Jesus both have said, it is not the thing that go to the stomach, through the mouth, that pollute everything. The thing that come out from the mouth pollute everything. <laughs> So these are very meaningful sayings. In every religion you can find such wonderful teachings. So, they use only eyes and ear for their survival. Who are these people? During their previous birth, they have cultivated, developed, disciplined their senses through meditation. And they are not crazy for sensual pleasure. A rebirth has taken place in Brahma world to spend such a long period, very peaceful life. But the thing is this, they also do not know what will happen to them after their death. They have no idea. The advantage of becoming human being is this. Animals, a spirit, ghost, devils, devas, brahmas, never prepare for their next life. Because they have no such idea. As human beings, we know this is not the first and the last. Of course, according to certain religion, as human being, this is the first and the last. But after death, either heaven or hell. But according to certain other religion, not only heaven and hells, there are 31 planes categorized into 31. People are crazy to go to heaven, not knowing actually what it is, where it is. There was a well-known writer in America. His name was Ingersoll. He said, instead of going to heaven, I prefer to go to hell because According to certain religions, those who do not believe in God will go to hell. Scientist, <laughs> psychologist, rationalist, free thinkers, including the Buddha, <laughs> all are in hell. If I go to hell, I meet all those intellectuals. <laughs> I can have a nice time with them. I think heaven is good for playboys, not for me. <laughs> this is the way, actually, how they ridicule this kind of belief. 
those who do not use their common sense, according to the Buddha, heaven and hell, only Buddhism preaches like this. Very clearly he mentioned, hell is not located under this earth or under the great ocean or under great Mahameru. Heaven is not a particular area created by anybody. He used this word. Only foolish people believe that hell is under this. You can examine today. Modern equipments are so advanced, you can drill from here <laughs> to the bottom to see whether there is hell. Instead of hell, you will be landed in America. <laughs> you try and see. <laughs> that is what the Buddha says, hell is not located anywhere under this. Hells exist everywhere. What is the definition of hell? Now we are not in hell. From our birth up the last breath, without any interval, life is nothing but suffering and suffering and suffering up to the end. Uh, that is hell. Here, we too have sufferings, but occasionally we laugh, we joke, we enjoy, again we cry, we fight, we quarrel, and we worry, we suffer, again we laugh, therefore we are not in hell. But there are millions from their birth up to the end, nothing but suffering, 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 suffering. The Buddha said, that is hell. Another man, very rich man, approached the Buddha. His name was Kutadanta. He said, we have no time to meditate, to observe eight precept. Uh, we are rich people. Even then, after our death, we like to go to heaven and enjoy our life. <laughs> Ask the Buddha whether there is any shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> then the Buddha said, Why do you want to wait until you die to experience heavenly bliss? While you are living here in this world, you can experience heavenly bliss if we know how to handle this life properly, can understand Buddha is a practical religious teacher who never create mythology, belief, imaginations in our mind. Practical way. You can create your heaven if you know how to handle your life. That is what you are here, to know something, how to make use of this life, how to avoid problems and troubles and worries and disturbances, how to gain more knowledge and understanding and wisdom. You are here for this purpose. So, after learning, through your understanding, you can adjust. But other living beings have no that chance. Ah, that's why I told you, we are fortunate. Assume we are suffering. While sufferings, we um, think, we are suffering while others are enjoying because we have not done enough good karma during our previous birth to maintain our human life. Therefore, we must be wise. Therefore, we must prepare not to suffer again. And then, do more and more meritorious deeds. What is the meaning of meritorious deeds? Do some service to others to release 
their suffering, their worries, their fear and their poverty, their problems. These called meritorious deeds. Do some service to others. The more you gain happiness, the merit means happiness. By doing some good deeds, the happiness that you gain is called merit. It is not the material gain, the happiness. That happiness, punyani paralokas ming patitta hontipaninam, the sayings of the Buddha. Punya. Chittang punati ti punya. English word merit doesn't give the real meaning. Whenever we do some good deeds, with confidence, with happiness, with understanding, uh, that is called punya, merit. English word merit doesn't give that meaning. The Buddha used the word merit as punya. Punyani paralokasmi. After our death, there is nobody else to help us. Only our own karma. But some people still believe that after their death, when people put something into their coffin, they get in the next life. <laughs> Do you know, according to my observation, I noticed Chinese are the most cleverest people in this world. Do you know why? They are the only people who open a bank in hell. <laughs> Americans also could not do that. Still. Not only that, they produce currency note, valid in hell. What happened? When they burn this currency note, one who is in hell receives just like a fax message. <laughs> See how clever they are. I understand in Taiwan there is a modern method. Because every day they are burning, especially this period, your good friends coming <laughs> this period, they burn and burn and burn and the whole country, the smoke. So now they have introduced credit card system. <laughs> Put the credit card into the coffin, finish, nothing to burn. I think better to introduce in Singapore also. Another thing that I notice, Chinese ghosts are very obedient ghosts. <laughs> because there is a proper time for them to come out, there is a proper period for them to stay, proper time for them to go back. But all the other devils come and disturb us every day. <laughs> See how good they are. You give only one chicken leg, they satisfy, go back and sleep for one year. You know. Very good. <laughs> so, my dear friend, we have to use our common sense, intelligence, without following traditional, method, practices introduced by our forefathers when science and various other modern educations were not advanced for us to understand the nature of life, nature of death, nature of birth, nature of the world. They were in the dark. The, the method they started to avoid certain fear and worries and disturbances, still we follow. 
time has come for us to minimize as much as possible. Because we notice the other religionists take the advantage to condemn, to ridicule what Buddhists are doing. They say Buddhist. Whatever Chinese do, poor Buddhism get the blame. <laughs> because all these things they burn and burn and burn. Where did the Buddha ask you to burn all these things? <laughs> he asked you to burn only one thing, jhana. Attainment of jhana means burning. Burn your defilement, burn your anger, burn your jealousy, burn your greedy, burn your selfishness, jhana. Burn only these things, not the papers and <laughs> joysticks and everything. So, they asked me to stop by nine o'clock, but still I could not complete one first principle. <laughs> Anyway, let us come to the second one. <laughs> Sila, we have completed, I explain. We do not observe Sila only by abstaining or keeping away. If you say, I take the precept not to kill, not to steal, not to do this, that is only one aspect. Charitra Sila, Varitra Sila. Two aspects, negative and positive. When you decide not to kill, uh, varitra, keep away from killing by knowing that it is bad. Uh, then the Buddha said like this, if you cannot understand why killing is bad, attanang upamang kattva nahaneyana ghate, when another person come and try to kill you, how do you feel? Very nice. <laughs> Try to cut, or cut to shoot, or cut to step. How do you feel? <laughs> so when you try to kill another living being, that living being also experience the same thing what you experience. See, the practical way how the Buddha preached. Another very nice parable to understand the Buddha's way of teaching. One day when he was sitting on the bank of a river with a group of disciples, he saw a piece of uh, wood, a log, floating in the river. Then the Buddha said, can you see that piece of wood floating there? Yes. What do you think about, what is the fate of this lock? Because his way of teaching is not by giving talk or lecture. Allow others to think. And then open the mind, give the chance for them to open the mind to understand. But others, give commandment, religious laws, by creating fear and threatening, frightening. But the Buddha never adopted that method, only opening the mind. Some disciples said, I think the more and more water goes inside his wood, it may sink. The Buddha said, yes, you are right. Then another group said, when it was floating like this, some people may come and take it home and cut into pieces and use as firewood. Then the Buddha said, yes, you are right. Then another group said, this one, if there is any island, this people landed somewhere on the way. Then the Buddha said, yes, you are right. Another group said, oh, this may reach the sea. Then the Buddha said, yes, you are right. And then he said, 
our life is exactly like that piece of wood. Uncertainty. No one can say earlier what really happened later. We can create our own imagination, but impermanency, changes can take place according to circumstances. Uh, these are beautiful parables, advices given by the Buddha for us to understand. He never prepared his talk and distribute the papers <laughs> and ask people to read. He watched their mind first, whether people can understand what he is going to preach, because he get that psychic power and enlightenment. We haven't got that. Uh, then he preached according to their mind. Then very easily they can grasp. That is why some people cannot understand. After listening to one or two words from the Buddha, some of them attain arahant. We have been learning Buddhism from our childhood, still we could not attain anything. <laughs> Those people, after listening one or two words, attain arhanthahood, they say. The reason is, the Buddha study the mind first, then find out whether he can understand this. What are the obstructions, hindrances, how far he has developed his mind earlier to understand this. He got special characteristic, six kind of characteristic, this is one of them. So, attainment of sainthood instantly. Then the second one is samadhi. Samadhi means the mind that we cultivated by observing precept, abstaining and developing. We keep away from killing that in abstaining. We develop kindness, compassion towards others, positive side. And we abstain from stealing, bluffing, swindling, cheating. On the other side, we develop honesty, sincerity. So the precept divided into two, negative, positive. Not only abstaining, not only keeping away from bad things, we have to cultivate good things also. Uh, then there is no fear of God, fear of hell, fear of punishment, but through understanding. When you observe the precept, you protect others, not only you. If you like to have good neighbors, you must have nice fence or wall. Otherwise, always there will be argument, disturbances. But when you put up nice fence or wall, you protect your house and your family, you protect their house and their family also. So observing precept is exactly like this. Now you decide not to kill. Then you allow others to live peacefully without fear. That is the highest contribution that you can perform for them. You stop stealing, swindling, cheating, bluffing others. Then they can live peacefully, no need to lock the door also at night time. Those who believe in God for their protections and blessings, it's very good. No one can say it is wrong. But don't forget to lock the door at night time when you go out. There is no guarantee that God will protect your house until you come back. <laughs> that is Buddhism. When I went to Australia, after my talk, one Australian lady asked this question. What is the Buddhist concept toward God? I told her, 
the Buddha never said that there is no God. You cannot find this word in the Buddha's teaching. There is no God. In fact, one of the disciples asked this question. Have you got evidence to prove the existence of devas or God? The Buddha gave a very interesting answer. He said, What have you got to prove that devas or God do not exist? And we can understand the Buddha's attitude. That means he doesn't want to highlight and he doesn't want to deny. To him it is not very important. If you know how to fulfill your duties, responsibilities by maintaining the, your human dignity, give, give respect to your human intelligence, God is not important. So I told, I gave this parable to that lady. So if you believe in God, if you pray to God, if you worship, very good. But don't forget to lock your door when you go out. <laughs> you must know how to do your duty. That is Buddhism. If God exists, so much the better. If God does not exist, you never lose anything. Now that is Buddhism. <laughs> so, when we develop this mind, we maintain some sort of peace, calmness, tranquility, satisfaction in our life. Now we haven't got any of them. Because our minds are very weak. Do you know the reason why our minds are very weak? We have fear because of that weakness. We have insecurity feeling because of that fear. We have suspicion because of that fear. A small children scared of so many things because their minds are very weak. And we also maintain this fear. Reason is, every minute we are wasting our mental energy for nothing through our five senses. How you use your senses? Your eyes, your ear, your nose, your mouth and your body, these five channels, you extract the mental energy and fix that energy to the external object and create your imagination, suspicion, fear, worry and admiring and enjoying emotional satisfaction. Use your mental energy. In the end you won't gain anything. Disturb the mind, that's all. You collect so many rubbish from outside through the five senses and disturb the poor mind. Mind has no time to relax. Every second, either through the senses, if not the mind itself, create imagination, also mental energy. So, Minds are weak because we are wasting, wasting, wasting energy. Example. A huge waterfall. The water pouring, spread everywhere. There's nobody to do the, through the proper channels. An engineer, having seen this, he decided to make a dam to collect the water. After that, produce hydroelectricity 
to illuminate the whole country. Formerly, the waste that water. Exactly in the same manner, we are wasting our mental energy for nothing. Here the Buddha introduced, don't waste your mental energy through these five senses. Close this fine. Then the mind gets the chance to relax. Because mind has to reject, mind has to accept, and to consider whether to accept or to reject. Real torture to the mind. Keep away from all those things. Allow that poor mind to relax. Uh, at that time, you rejuvenate, you recharge the battery in your mind that you have wasted. When you concentrate on one particular object, neutral object, without allowing the mind to run here and there, then you develop. Bhavana means development, not meditation. Meditation means deep thinking. There's no religious value. The Buddha used the word bhavana, development. Development of the mind, that means we harness, accumulate the lost energy and develop. When it is developed, the mind become very dynamic force. The fear we had earlier disappear. Suspicion, insecurity, all those things disappear. Then we get courage, knowledge, understanding, wisdom through this cultivation. This method has no religion, not belong to any particular religion. Any human being who has a mind, can practice this method. Then, when these disturbances are no more there, we have certain evil root deeply rooted into the mind, difficult to uproot. Now we keep quiet, look nice, look very cultured, or religious, when there are no disturbances. Now you have very serene looking faces, very happy, very calm, very nice, look very good people. But one or two words are more than enough to irritate and provoke and disturb you, you can behave like devils. Because those devils were sleeping, hiding. Now we are not, you, you don't allow them to come up. By considering the nature of our mind, we are keeping them always at the bottom, as sediment. When circumstances come, irritation, temptation, uh, then arouse, entirely change our attitude, our way of life, our face, our mind, through the influence of internal evil forces. As long as these evil forces remain, we never experience happiness. Happiness is one thing, pleasure is another thing. We take pleasure as happiness. It is not happiness. Pleasure we gain, what is pleasure? Emotional satisfaction. Fleeting nature. Next moment disappear. The pleasure you had, at this moment, 
become the biggest headache and problem next moment. Uh, this, now you can understand the difference between pleasure and happiness. Happiness we cannot gain by keeping those evil forces in the mind. Uh, when those evil forces, anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will, selfish ideas are no more in the mind, uh, then the brightness that appear in the mind is the happiness. So now you are not experiencing happiness. You use the wrong word, it is no happiness. It is emotional satisfaction or pleasure. Pleasures are changeable, moment to moment. So if we want to maintain happiness, give this chance to your mind to relax, to develop and to suppress and reduce and uproot later all the evil forces which are hiding in our mind. So when we meditate, use the word meditation, at that time we experience some sort of peace. As soon as we stop our meditation, again go back to the normal way of life. No peace, no happiness, all disturbances again. Like this. When you take a bucket of water from a pond, the water is covered with dried leaves and dust. But the water is very clear. So you can shake uh, all the dirt, so you can see clear water. And uh, then you take one bucket of water. Very nice. But after that, the dirt all slowly come and come. So when you meditate, your mind is pure. You don't allow anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will, all the dirty things, wicked things to appear, disturb the mind. But when you stop your meditation, all these things come in again. When you covered green grass from a bucket, Obation. Key for two weeks. Open. You can see green leaves turn into white. So when you meditate, a lot of changes take place in your mind. It's very calm, very serene, and no anger, no jealousy, no grudge. Because your mind is under the influence of this concentration. But when you go back to your normal way of life, again those things come back. And the grass that you covered for two weeks changed the color because you stopped the sunlight. After that, we take, up next week when you come back, you can see again turned into green color. So that our minds are also exactly like this when you come back to the normal worldly life. Worldly life is very troublesome. It is true. You cannot become very religious people. If you try to be very religious, your life becomes nuisance to others. Yes, your family people, your members, your friends cannot appreciate because you are too religious. Therefore, I don't advise anybody to be too religious. Become nuisance to others. Go step by step, step by step, developing, developing, without, without allowing others to create misunderstanding or become nuisance. Don't allow your way of life to become nuisance to others. You want to show you are too religious. The example, 
in your family. You eat anything, whatever you like. Suddenly you change your mind, you say, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> Don't cook anything here, no fish, no meat, no egg, nothing. You become nuisance to all the others in your family. Uh, that is why I tell you, if you want to do, go to that extreme, then renounce. After that, no problem. <laughs> Without creating disturbance to others. <laughs> Lead a normal way of life. Again, the Buddha introduced this way of life practically. For lay people, householders, worldly people, one method. For the monks and nuns, another method. So you should not try to follow the monks' way of life. I advise monks also not to follow your way of life. <laughs> Wrong method. <laughs> Today they have mixed up all these things. See? By knowing the difficulties that you had to face, your duties, your commitments, your responsibilities, your obligations, so many things. You had to concentrate, you had to work, you had to earn, you had to accumulate, you had to support, how many things. And we have got time for you to meditate. You had to think about your children, your wife, your husband, your property, your business. But there are certain things that you can do as worldly people. Here the Buddha says, you can maintain four kinds of happiness. Atthi Sukha, Bhoga Sukha, Anana Sukha, Anavajya Sukha. Four kinds of happiness. If you come to know that you have something, either bank account, or a house, or a piece of land, or a business, or some jewelries, you gain some sort of happiness. The Buddha said, that is important for you. He never said, you must throw away all those things and go back to younger. <laughs> because it is not practical. Atthi Sukha, Bhoga Sukha. By spending what you have earned, don't be stingy. Some people work and earn, never eat even good food. <laughs> and never buy good clothing also. So they say, enjoy your life. You can have nice food, good dress, nice house and television and no harm at all. But you must enjoy respectable way. Without harming, bluffing, swindling, cheating others. You can enjoy your life. Buddhism never say, you should not laugh, you should not joke, you should not enjoy your life. No. You can have a nice life, peaceful life, enjoyable life, but respectable way. Bhoga Sukha. Anana Sukha. By knowing your income, you had to adjust your budget. Not to borrow from others. You had to surrender your dignity and under obligation. Sometimes you go and hide or run away from the country after borrowing from others. Don't make the habit to borrow from others. Maintain that happiness to think, I am not indebted to anybody. Independent. That happiness is very important for human dignity. The Buddha said this. Last one is more important. Anavajya Sukha. When you think that you have not done any harm to anybody, that you have no guilty feeling in your mind, I have done this and this and this and that, all the dirty things. That happiness is the most important, remarkable happiness in our life. Why? All the other three happiness disappear before our death cannot carry. But the last happiness that we maintain in our mind, free mind. 
that happiness support us to have better rebirth. Because we die, we depart from this world without having any guilty concern, guilty feeling in our mind. Now this is the way how to, we had to adjust our way of life if we want to lead the worldly life. But by realizing the difficulties, problems and commitment, some people renounce. It is up to them. Then they can have a very peaceful life and no jealousy, no anger, no grudge and very peaceful life they can lead after that renunciation. Renunciation does not mean simply by shaving it and using the, the clothing into this. That is not the renunciation. This is external. External object, manifestation. Renunciation takes place in the mind. That means reduce attachment. Reduce craving, reduce crazy attitude towards so many things. Uh, that is called renunciation. Uh, when you reduce all those things, naturally your way of life also going on changing, changing, changing without your knowledge. Uh, that is the real. As householders, you can practice this renunciation according to your age, your maturity, your understanding, you can practice by reducing and reducing. In the end, have free mind. Depart from this world with free mind, with hopes and confidence. Many people die with confusion, with worry, with fear, with uncertainty because they do not know how to adjust. Here the Buddha has shown the path for worldly people to adjust their life. In the end, one day they can depart from this world without fear and worry and disturbances. So when we train that mind, we experience all these good results. Then the last item is Panya, wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge. Knowledge means that we gathered after listening and reading and observing all the worldly things. But there is no wisdom. Wisdom appears in the mind when mental hindrances, obstructions, mental pollution, mental impurities are not active in the mind. Otherwise it remains as knowledge. There are many learned people all over the world, wonderful knowledge, they know everything under the sun and the moon. They are learned people, they have wonderful knowledge, but they, are, they haven't got wisdom. Wisdom never appeared. There is one particular characteristic of the Buddha amongst Nine virtues, Vijja, Charana, Sampanno, Vijja and Charana, these both we can find in the Buddha, but not in many others. Knowledge or wisdom and character. Many people are very intelligent, but their character is horrible. Either hot-tempered, egoistic, emotional, jealous, greedy, temperamental, wonderful knowledge. Some others are very 
kind, very peaceful, patient, tolerance, all the good qualities are there. But their wisdom is very poor. They are called kind-hearted fools. Remember this. If you develop your kind heart without knowledge and without understanding, you get into trouble. People take the advantage. If you develop your generosity without your knowledge and wisdom and understanding, you get into trouble. People take the advantage. These two must go together. So in the Buddha, you can find the wisdom and the conduct, both. When the Buddha's dead body was carrying away for the cremation, People assembled, although not Buddhists, at that time there were very few Buddhists, but with one voice, all of them say, this is the body of a man who never uttered a lie. That reputation was there even among the non-Buddhists. So, wisdom means that knowledge we use by cultivating, developing, purifying our mind, and then we gain wisdom. So this knowledge, there are three methods. Suttamaya, Chintamaya, Bhavanamaya. Three methods to gain this. Sutta Maya means listening. Those days, they never used reading because no books to read. They learn everything by listening. Therefore they say Sutta Maya. Bahu Sutta. Very learned person is called Bahu Sutta. One who heard more. Bahu Sutta. That means learned. But never say, today is a well-read man. Same meaning, because they are, we have books today. By listening, we gain knowledge. That knowledge is not very clear. Because you mix up with your understanding capacity, even then you get some sort of knowledge and wisdom. Next one is Chintamaya. Chinta means thinking. You think unbiasedly. Investigate. Think deeply. Try to find the answer. Investigate. Then you get knowledge or the answer. That is also not 100% correct. Uh, then the last method is bhavana me panya. Through this bhavana, meditation, by reducing evil forces from the mind, by cultivating our mind, by purifying our mind, we gain wisdom, turn into enlightenment. Why it is called enlightenment? When this hall is dark, if you enter into this, there are so many things, but you cannot understand what they are. Just touch and create your own imagination. Our mind at this moment exactly like that, because we have no enlightenment. But when you enter into this building, when the whole building is lighted, illuminated, then we can see what are the things and who are the people. Brightness is there. So when the dark cloud were removed from the mind, brightness appeared. 
Uh, that brightness is enlightenment. Real wisdom is there. <coughs> a man has written a book. <coughs> Learned ignorance, the title of the book. Learned ignorance. He says, the more we learn, the more we enlarge our ignorance. He is right. Because to learn anything, we cannot get anything from outside. Not necessary. We bring rubbish from outside to disturb the mind. We had to learn how to open the mind. Uh, when we open the mind, the development of this mind create knowledge, wisdom, understanding, purity, not from outside. Insight. The mind itself. So when we try to meditate or do bhavana, we learn that closed mind Slowly, 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 we open that mind. Uh, then the brightness appears, understanding appears, knowledge appears, then the willpower, courage, all the good qualities appear. We cannot bring them from outside. We cannot bring them from heaven or from any other part of the world. All we have to develop in our mind. Uh, these are the three human principles, my dear friends. Sila, Samadhi, Panya. I explain these things without using many textual uh, or explanations of book knowledge. By using some simple example and uh, certain words that you can understand things. But further details, textually we can give. For hours we can talk according to the books. So I hope one and a half hours, two hours. We start at 7.30, exactly 9.30. I think organizers, I don't know whether they blame me, they <laughs> ask me to stop at 9. Never mind, we have not wasted our time. I think, I believe that you gain, you are benefited. You can continue, you can discuss with others, you can clarify. Then you can extend, expand, get further clarification. So, thank you for your indulgence. May the blessings of the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha be upon you for your good health, long life, peace and happiness. Thank you very much.